The subject today is let's cook a little something. <laughs> let's cook a little something. Amen. You want to add a little bit more to that? Let's cook a little something, something. Amen. But let's cook a little something. Let's cook a little something. I know today that I am in the company of great cooks in the Midway Church of God in Christ. These folk up in here don't play. Amen. You are enriched with various uh, heritage of cooks. Amen. That's been passed on to you. And uh, I know that it is common. I think some years ago they did a very nice little booklet that shared recipes. Uh, heritage recipes that our parents passed on to us, our grandmothers passed on to us. But the truth is, most of you in here, all these good cooks, you don't even need to look at a recipe. Amen. You already know how to cook a little something, something. <laughs> a little dash of this, a little dash of that. And, and it gives a special flavor to it, unique to you and your heritage and your style of cooking. And the Bible lets us know that the word of God is our meal. Am I right? If we eat the word of God, if the word of God is prepared in the way that we understand it, it can be a blessing. So let's cook a little something, something. The eighth verse says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somewhere uh, in our walk, and let's even say in our walk and how we're going to walk out God's plan in our lives for this year, it has to be something more than uh, I'm saved, I've been saved all day, and I'm glad. It has to be something that we can say that because we are saved, others are blessed. And we had something to do with that. Because we are saved, others are blessed. Scripture says, let your what? Light so shine before men that they may see your good works. But do what? Glorify your father which is in heaven. Yes, God wants you saved. Yes, God wants you blessed. But he wants us blessed so that we can bless somebody. He wants us delivered so we can help others get delivered. He wants us to come up. He wants our whole perspective of life to change so that we can see things a different way. And the same way we saw things in our sins, negative and poor and uh, down energy, we began to see things from a different perspective. The proverbial statement is that the glass is not half empty, it's half full. We began to see even challenges as an opportunity for someone to come out of this thing better. Is that right? Y'all going to help me cook a little something here today? Amen. Let's, let's cook a little something. And so somewhere in the walk of our lives, we have to be more than just satisfied with being saved all day and just glad. But did I make someone else glad? Did my life make a difference? Of all the people who know me, do they now know God better because of me? Amen. Even people know me. I know a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. They know your name. But what do they know about your Savior? What do they know about your God? What does your lifestyle do to encourage them to even want to take a look at what makes you different? What makes you go to the same school? What makes you go to the same job? What makes you have the same boss? And you give God praise. And I cuss. <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm just saying that's what they, you want the testimony to be. What makes you different? Sometimes we have had that scenario to happen. God, why do you place me here? And why did you place me in this setting? Why did you place me at this job? And why at this desk, right beside Luquitha, who can't stop talking? Amen. It is probably because God wants Luquitha. I'm just making up a name now. <laughs> Anybody here named Laquita? Okay. God wants Laquita to understand the power that comes from you being able to keep your mouth closed. Amen. Amen. When it's time for them to spill the tea. Y'all know what that means? What's the talk now? Tell me what's really going on. 
tell me that she don't know that her man is dipping and tipping and dipping. Child, what's the tea? Let's sip and talk. Let's talk and sip. What's the tea? Amen. Well, maybe LaQuita need to know that you don't have to pass the tea to me. And I don't, boy, y'all got kind of quiet on that. What's wrong? Y'all all right? Amen. You don't have to pass the tea to me. I don't want to hear any negative or gossip right now. Amen. Amen. Let's talk of good things. Do you know it's true? And sometimes things that you know truth, you don't need to let it come out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. Because one day, Laquita, <laughs> Jumug may come in with a gun and he's shooting everything he heard been talking. Is that right? Boy, y'all got a little quiet. Y'all want to help me cook a little bit? So somewhere we have got to get to the place where we are because of who we are. We are not barren. That's what this scripture is saying. That if these things be in you and abound, that means develop and grow and uh, become more and more. It will cause us or it will make us that we should neither be barren. That means uh, without being productive nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's, let's, let's in our prayers, think about this, let's in our prayers, let's pray that because I'm saved this year, God, will you help me tap into what can help other people get saved in my life? Amen. My friends, amen. My colleagues, or someone that I can just go in witness to, let me have a record better than, ooh, I'm glad I'm saved and they not. Let me just make sure that you didn't call me to this place. You didn't call me to the desk right beside Laquita. Out of all the places they could put me, they put me right beside her. What if, what if God wanted more than you being able to come to church and say I'm saved? But you can look at Laquita and say, Laquita, can I ask you a question? Are you saved? Excuse me? <laughs> Are you saved? What do you mean by that? Hey, I want to talk to you about that sometime. Let's do lunch. Amen. And you'll be able to sit down and ask the question. I just ask the question. Sometimes when you ask people to say what they're going to say, they'll tell you what church they go to. They'll tell you what their religion is. I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. I'm AME. I'm CME. I'm COGIC. <laughs> they will begin to uh, name as this woman did what Jesus met at the well. But you can ask the question, are you saved? And you can do it in such a nice way. It's not threatening. Hey, I just want to know. I want to hang out with saved people. I like to know, are you saved? And if you're not, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to share them with you. Is that right? Amen. Thought y'all going to help me cook a little bit here today. Well, now to qualify, we find here that the scripture says, if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren. Oh, okay. I have to be made to be better at being an effective witness. I don't just be a good witness just because I'm saved. Amen. Amen. There are levels of effectiveness. There are things that I can do and be better at to be a better effective witness. Is that right? If I pull back and I look in the last three years of my life and ain't three folk have gotten saved from my witness. Now, I've been saved, but have I been good at helping other people get saved? Amen. Now, I've been good coming to church, but have I been able to bring the church to other people? Huh? Amen. So these things will make us better and not barren well what are these things what are these things and we have to look up a few scriptures back that we may see what these things are because we want to be better at helping other folk get better that ought to make us excited that we are better at making other people better in other words, what, what are we good for? Just to show off? Oh, no, but to show up. To help other people come up. The Sunday school lesson talked today about 
this wealthy man, rich man, who I guess wealth for him was just an opportunity to look down on other people and make other folk feel bad, to wave their wealth in front of somebody. And he found out, didn't he? He found out, the Bible says, in hell, he what? Lifted up his eyes. He woke up and said, where in the, <laughs> am I? <laughs> he woke up in hell. And that poor man who was left at his gate, Lazarus, was, he woke up in heaven, in the bosom of Abraham. And so he discovered that, you know, all of my wealth, everything I had, everything that I employed as what I waved in front of people, uh, it sure didn't keep me out of hell. Wonder what I could have done instead of another investment, another blessing, another something to throw off on people to show folk how blessed I am. Amen. Don't impress me. Bless me. Amen. Okay, so God done bless you. Okay, so you're driving a longer car. Okay, so you got a new house. And <laughs> what that mean to me? Amen. If I'm poor and I'm sitting right beside my dog, mow over. Y'all get that after a while. <laughs> the Bible says, mow over the dog came and what? Licked Lazarus souls. But the mow over was a coordinating conjunction. But many folk have thought a long time ago, Mo was the name of the dog. I see people sometime on the side, and I, I used to say, oh, why they got the poor dog uh, by them? They need food. I guess the dog going to need food, too. But the truth is, what they really need is the company of the dog. Amen. Because people have looked over them and won't give them any sanctity of life. And so the best, and you know, a dog is lawyer. They may be like, we finna walk. Here we go, then. <laughs> Amen. So sometimes people have an animal there just because they need to know that somebody is really paying attention to them. And we'll pass at them and just rave our head. Mm, mm, mm. No, if they can't feed themselves, they can't feed the dog. Amen. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself. Amen. Unless you're going to help get out, help them and the dog chill. Don't say something you'll get in trouble. Because how many folk have you helped in the last three years? Amen. How many folk and their dog have you helped in the last three years? Let's cook a little something now. Let's cook a little something. Because this Bible says that if this thing be in us, it will make us to not become barren. I should have more than a record of praise and the salvation that I was able to live. I should have a record of people who have been physically blessed, numerically blessed. Amen. I, my, the Bible tells us that where the heart is, the treasure will be also. Well, if you want to know what a person's real life goal is, follow their paycheck. You'll find out what they love. Where their checks are written is what they most are concerned about. In my bank account, all my checks should be something that says, I love people not just in mind but physically. I shop not only for my groceries but for somebody else. Amen. Amen. I don't look for it to knock on my door all the time. Ain't nobody asked me nothing. Ain't nobody knocked on my door. Well, you live behind a gate with a dog. How else are people going to get to your door? <laughs> but if you see someone who needs help to be lifted up, Lord, let me be saved enough to do something that will bless somebody. Come on, put a praise on that. Come on, put a praise on that. Well, what are these things? Look very quickly to the book, uh, to the same book, same chapter, uh, verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and the godliness through the knowledge of him that has caused us called us to glory and virtue. What I like about that scripture is the fact that God gives us through his divine power all things that pertain both unto godliness and life, which means God wants us to live a quality life. Is that right? 
God wants us to live life and life more abundantly. No, God does not want us to live in poverty. That's right, even though the Bible says the poor you have with you always, but God calls us to a quality of life because when it describes Lazarus, it described poverty as being evil. He had to deal with the evil of poverty. So poverty is not a desired result God has for you. He wants you to be blessed. Amen? Amen? He wants you to have life and more abundantly. In fact, he says the divine power he's given unto us that pertain unto life and godliness. God not only wants you to be godly, but he wants you to have fulfillment of life. How be so never? That's what mother used to say. How be so never? When we share our godliness, we should share our lives with one another. Verse 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by thee, these ye might be partakers of, divine, of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What salvation brings to us, saints of God, is the divine nature of God. That's what the scripture means. If any man is in Christ, he's a what? New creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Salvation means that we have a new and divine nature. Sometimes that's the difficult time or part to explain to people. Because, you know, well, what is being new? What is being saved? What is being new in God? It means when you say yes to God, when you ask him to forgive you of your sins, amen? When you ask him to come into your heart and change your life, when you open your eyes, you're still living in the same world, amen? You may not notice any physical differences because if you wore size 12 before you got saved, you still wear size 12, amen? I looked at my feet and they looked, they look new. Well, them the same foots as you had before you got saved. What happened when you got saved? God gave you a divine nature. That's what the testimony means when people say, you know, the stuff that I used to do, not only do I not do it, but I don't want to do it. I had a friend of mine's, uh, Minister Brown, he became a pastor. We went to college together, business school. He was in business school. And he came to watch one night and got saved. And he was lost after he got saved. I said, Brown, what's up, man? He said, Shepherd, uh, God saved me, man. I said, yes, I believe that, man. He said, but now I don't know what to do. <laughs> Shepherd, I used to club, man. He says, I used to jump and a whole lot of stuff. You may know that I don't want to tell you what I used to do. He says, but man I, man, I need church. He even said, I don't need church music to sound like club music because it makes me sick now. What's happened to me? I said, bro, God has changed your nature. Gave you a what? Divine nature. It is true. It is true. Some of those corrupt People, angry people, mean people, undercut people you used to hang out with before you got saved. When you get saved, the divine nature will have you seeking for something or somebody different. I need to be around some people going to pray for me. I need to be around some people who, when I share my story about what I endeavored to do, they can say, well, let's touch and agree. God can help you bring that to pass. I'm here for you to pray for you. Because my divine nature kicks in. And he causes us to have a change on the inside. What's happened? God has already given us a nature that escapes the corruption that is in the world through lust. Then the scripture says, and besides this, let's cook a little something. Come on, so let's cook a little something. He says, besides this, given all diligence, Add to your faith virtue. That means, let me see what I need to do to live a clean life. Old folks call that sanctify yourself. What do it mean to be sanctified? 
Y'all talking about y'all sanctified. I mean, y'all beat tambourines and fall out and scream and mess up the perm in your hair. What y'all mean by being sanctified? Sanctified means that I'm setting myself aside so that God can use me in a way that will glorify him. The Bible's already said God wants me to have a good life. He's not trying to take fun from me. He's trying to introduce me to joy. He's trying to give me sweet sleep and joy in the morning, not, amen, the evil spirits of drinking and a hangover. Amen. Some people drink, get drunk, and they wake up, amen, sometimes in hell. <laughs> amen. Don't go on and hit somebody, kill somebody. Don't know where they were. Don't even know what time of the day it is. Sometimes in jail. That can't be the life. Come on, let's cook a little something, y'all. That can't be the life. Amen. I'd rather be able to enjoy the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. God uses joy in your favor, and the devil will use fun against you. So let me give all diligence to do a little cooking here. Since I was saved through faith, let me add virtue. Amen. And to virtue, knowledge. I like the fact that I can see those apps going on and those pages turning today as we look through the scripture. It means that in this cooking that we're doing, that you want to add to your virtue knowledge. Here it is in verse six. Let's do a little cooking. Y'all cooking? All right. Now add to your knowledge temperance. Mm, come on, say, help me, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Temperance is... Um, having the strength, having the internal fortitude to not be pushed around by every wind and doctrine, not letting people trigger me or set me off because of their evil ways. Amen. Sometimes people will study us. Don't think people ain't studying you now. They're studying you. Amen. Can I borrow Laquitha again? Laquitha always... <laughs> She looking over there at your cubicle, trying to figure out what's your temperament to pull you in to an argument, to get you pulled into something. And because she has no filter on her mouth, she'll say anything that comes to her head. Amen. But you, you've been cooking. Amen. You don't got faith. You don't add it virtue. You don't add it knowledge. And also, you've added what the Bible says here, temperance. Amen. Temperance, being able to say or to hear things that used to trigger you, that they don't trigger you no more. Amen. Matter of fact, the word that rhyme with trigger don't trigger me no more. <laughs> used to. Used to, but not any more. Come on, y'all, we're cooking now. We're cooking, we're cooking. Well, to temperance, let's add what? Patience. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Patience. I found in some of the old saints used to say, now be careful now when you ask the Lord, Lord, give me patience. Give me patience, Lord. The Lord says, oh, really? Okay. To give you patience, I have to give you something that you need to be patient for. Hmm. Amen. So sometimes when you go into a situation, we're like, what is this? I can't stand this situation. Why me, Lord? Lord be like, patience. You ask for patience. How do I know that you have patience if you don't have the situations confronting you that you need patience? Amen. Well, let's keep on cooking. Y'all got a minute? And to patience, what? Godliness. Now, godliness is simply the request to God. God, what do you want me to look like? What do you want me to act like? How do you want me to present myself? How do I represent you or represent you when I go into situations? How do I represent you in a godly fashion? Amen. That's why the Bible tells us to dress in modest appeal. The Lord is not trying to kill your fashion statement. The Lord wants you to be hooked up. You're the light of the world. Amen? God don't uh, 
bother you about your, how, how much your clothes cost? Amen. You want to wear expensive stuff? Wear your expensive stuff. Amen. But make sure it's godly. Ain't nobody care about the name that's on it. St. John, Le Boot, Red Bottoms. Amen. Ain't nobody care about all that. But you and a few other people you want to impress, if that's your flow, go with your flow, now. But make sure it's godly. Amen. And sometimes the best way to know something is godly is to ask God. <laughs> God, how does this look? Am I representing you? And sometimes God will let you get out the house. <laughs> Blessed quietness. Holy quietness. You get out the house, pull it and tuck it. You pull it and tuck it. Amen. That dress got a, got a, got a spirit of its own. It, every time you pull it down, it pop way up higher. And God will whisper in your ear and say, hey, it's going to take all that energy. Go ahead and turn around. <laughs> And go, you got two, you got two black dress. Get the other one. Talk to me now. I was in the store one day. I saw a hat. It was cool to me. It represented. I thought it was cool. Amen. But when I passed by a mirror, I went, uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't finna look like no thug or no gigolo. Amen. I try to be fashion, but no, no, no. What do you think about this, God? He like, don't even buy it. Because you won't have to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep cooking now. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. What is godliness? Asking the question, God, what do you approve of in my life? Now, that's all right, right? Because the Bible lets us know that we are not even our own. We are the temple of the Lord. Why wouldn't we have the spirit joyfully that I want to represent God if I'm the temple of God? He lays us down at sleep at night, but we can't wake ourselves up. Only he makes the choice to touch us with the finger of love and tell us to arise, my son, and what? Be about your father's business. Thank you, Amen. So I must what? Represent him. There's nothing wrong with that. In him, we live, we move, we have our being. Yes. And when we choose godliness, God will choose to send us into situations to represent him. Amen. Amen. God says, I need someone who's loving, who's kind, who's patient to go in here and deal with this situation who can represent me. And we say, here, my Lord, send me. Verse 7 shows you some more of this cooking now. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Oh, my God. We can't be saints and be mean. Amen. Say amen or help me, Lord. One of them. Come on now. And to godliness, brotherly kindness kindness which means that we don't have to see things the same all the time but there's something unique about kindness the bible lets us know with what love and kindness have i drawn thee amen god had the right every bit of the right amen to show us judgment and judgment alone but i thank god for his kindness he looked beyond my faults, plural, and saw my needs. One song says, he, when he reached, he had to reach way down to pick me up. Amen. Not just one more chance, amen, or a second chance, but many, many chances. How many of the Lord has given you many, many chances? Will you give him praise? He's given you many, many chances. brotherly kindness so what we ought to do in kind is to be kind to others sometimes it takes a willful effort to do that I'm, I'm about close because I promise I won't be as long as I was last time but it takes a willful effort sometimes because we have to ask the question could I have dealt with that a different way amen do I allow my kindness to be based upon how I've been treated today because sometimes we are almost uh, bipolar. Way high, manic, manic happy. But then we get depressed, we're real low. 
it gets confusing to folk. They look at you, the first thing they want to know is, what kind of day are you having first? <laughs> you ain't about to hurt my feelings, because the last time I said hello, you was way up there. Hey, now, hey, hey, man, hey. And the next day, you be like, hey, they be like, hey. <laughs> hey, man, brotherly kindness takes an effort. Brotherly kindness says, watch this, Lord, don't let me be so bipolar in my kindness and my charity that people can't figure out if I'm saved today or if I'm just mean today. Dad used to say that when you have a consistency, but that's why you have to cook this thing. You have to let it grow, right? You have to get better and better at leveling off at kindness. He used to say when you are bipolar in your walk with God, even the dog ain't figured you out yet. Say, man, when you come home, the dog looking at, let me see, let me see, let me see now. <laughs> Normally they rub me on the head, but Thursday they kick me. Let me see what's <laughs> Come on now. Let's keep cooking. Let's keep cooking. What? Brotherly kindness. And to kindness, what? Charity. And that's why this verse ends. This part comes to the end, but what I started, with was, started off with by saying, for if these things, what, be in you and develop or grow, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we're going to be effective, if we're going to be better at blessing people, we've got to get these virtues in us, they must not also be in us and dormant, but they must grow and develop. And God says he will make us to be fruitful. Let's cook a little something, huh? There's a way to make a pound cake. Amen. I told you got all we good cookers up in here. Amen. And get one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature. Now, you might make yours a little different. Amen. That's why yours send people to high blood pressure. You know, send away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One and a half cup of granulated sugar. Four large eggs. How many eggs y'all use? Woo-wee. At least we get more protein. <laughs> Two tablespoons of vanilla extract. Two cups of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of baking powder. One and a half teaspoon of salt. How much? How many teaspoons of salt do y'all use? <laughs> None. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Half cup of milk. And these are the steps that makes that pound cake. You preheat your oven to 325. Grease and flour, a standard size pan. And then in a large mixing bowl, cream together the butter and the sugar. Until it's what? Light and fluffy? Come on now. I'm cooking, I'm cooking now. <laughs> right, all right. Amen. This can be done by using a hand mixer, what the old folks used to use, or you may have the modern day standard mixer with, mm, all right. Now, I don't know if all people do this, but you add the eggs one at a time. Okay, all right. Beating well after each addition, then you mix in the vanilla extract. Mm -hmm. Then in a separate bowl, you whisk together the flour, baking powder, and salt. Gradually add this dry mix to the butter mix, alternating with the milk. Begin and end with the dry ingredients, mixing until just combined. Do not overmix. Okay. Y'all all right. Then you pour the batter into the prepared pan and smooth the top with a spatula. That's usually the time part of where I come in. What y'all doing with that spatula? What y'all doing? <laughs> Smelling good in here. Bake in the preheated oven for about one to one and a half hours. Or until you pull out the what? The toothpick. <laughs> Insert into the center. 
And when you do that, if it comes out clean, then you're good. The exact baking time may vary according to what kind of stove that you have and this type of thing. But once baked, remove the pound cake from the oven and give me a call. No, I'm just kidding. I just threw that. <laughs> and let it cool in the pan for about 10 minutes. Amen. Now, what's interesting about this, and we're going we're gonna to close. If I were to hand you two sticks of unsalted butter and tell you to eat it. Amen. You're going to need patience, temperance, and a whole lot of things not to tell me something else. <laughs> <laughs> Think about this, and we're happy to stand and close. The Bible says God makes all things work together for our good. Which means God is cooking something. Now watch how the scripture reads when it says that. It didn't say that everything is going to be good. He makes all things what? Work together for your good. So if I were to give you one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter and tell you to eat that, you'd be like, no, no. If I were to give you four large eggs uncooked and tell you to eat that, you probably wouldn't eat that. If you take a whole little bottle of vanilla extract and drink it, it don't taste like ice cream. It tastes like you don't lost your mind drinking all that extract. <laughs> Is that right? And let me catch some of y'all eating two cups of flour, and I'm going to call somebody on you. <laughs> White all around the mouth. I'm calling somebody to get you some help. <laughs> Amen? Amen? A whole half a thing of, of salt. But here's the thing about it. None of it tastes good by itself. But come on, say, let's cook. In other words, God is a great cook. He's a great baker. Amen. He makes all things work together for your good. I know you had a little trouble. I know you had some challenges. I know you want to understand, God, why you let this happen. It feels so salty. God, why'd you let this happen? Because it seems just too much. You have to understand that God is cooking something. And he's going to throw you in the oven after a while, preheated at 325. And let me tell you something, when you come out, I almost felt my preach thing come in. When you come out, you're coming out as pure gold. You're coming out as a pound cake. You thought I was just eggs. You thought I was just salt. You thought I was just a vanilla abstract. Look at me now. God's been cooking something. Stand to your feet. Let's give God some praise. That's it for today. God is working on something. God is cooking something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for what you've added to the mix. In many scenarios, God, that we don't question you, but we did want to ask the question, why did you let it happen? What was going on here? I thought that I was to expect this and that happened. I thought it would have been done by this, but it's taking longer. What's going on? God says, I'm cooking a little something. I'm cooking a little something. But watch me cook. Watch me cook. Because I will make all things what? Work together for my good. It's coming out for my good. And I want to tell you today in prayer, saints of God, there will be glory after this. There will be glory. Let God keep on cooking it. Hallelujah. These things be in you. They'll make you to become unbarren and not unfruitful. Hallelujah. God's working on something. God is working on something. And I know Jesus will work it out. Hallelujah. He will work it out. Hallelujah. I have patience today. That when the master cook is done, I'll come out shining as pure gold. In the matchless name of Jesus. Come on, put a praise on that. Put a praise on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put a praise on Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. Thank you, Brother Pastor, for that great word.